restart, restart. This is the welcome to the B Tech Off the Cuff podcast with um, Jack Jones, as I called you in the first yeah. time we ever met. Yeah, Jack Jones. This time I'm not a guest. I'm I'm a host. But this is going to be an official thing that we're going to try and do at least I want to say well, at least once a month. And Mr. Marcus McCready might eventually join us, but he's uh, he's shocking at replying to his messages. <laughs> so Marcus, get your WhatsApp sorted, and we might eventually get you in. But I hope this is um, back. Well, I say back on my sofa. This is the second time we've done a podcast, but. Zach is going to be the co-host. Yeah, yeah very I feel exciting. very honoured. Very honoured to be a co-host. And this time we're on your sofa rather yeah. than my sofa. And I've got socks on. Yeah. Not, not me, because last time I had oh, me um, smelly vivos and it wasn't, it wasn't, it's not really good. good. Any, anybody who wears barefoot shoes, I understand. It's not great going to someone's house after training in vivos. It's never, never great. But <laughs> it's a great start to the podcast, isn't it? Lola yeah. might be joining me as well at some point. She's a daycare, but she will join me. But... Um, what's been going on with you? You've been launching your project Lean. We might as well start with something business-wise. Oh, yeah. Going straight into it, straight into it, yeah. Go so, on. launch project Lean. Obviously, if anyone who follows me sees this, they've seen the success that I had with Lewis, one of my clients. He dropped mountains of body fat, photo shoe condition, and he's become some sort of, um, <laughs> he'll laugh when he listens to this, some sort of influencer now. He's loving he's, sharing he's, his physique. Got, I was going to say, he's yeah. got a little, I think, I, uh, I don't know if I follow him back, but I've seen some of his content and stuff pop up here and there. That's yeah, good, so... Like. Obviously, with that going so well, what I did was I released it to 15 other guys um, and they're involved in it now. I'm doing it with them, so they've got no excuse to complain about it because I'm going in the trenches with them as well and experiencing nice. all the emotions. So. How many calories are you on? Me at the minute, I'm on 2,360. Yeah, That's so. about half of what I'm on at the <laughs> minute. Oh, man, must be nice. Must be nice, yeah. I mean... Um, I wouldn't say I'm struggling just yet. It's quite easy now, but I'm, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm dreading the back end of it either. It's all, all in the process. It's all yeah. going to be fun. But yeah, looking forward to that. What about yourself? Uh, in a minute. But business-wise, what's going on? Yeah. Just kind of, well, we start the 20-day routine reset. So I've got a group of clients doing that. That was my little challenge because obviously I'm staying off alcohol. I'm just living, what, what did you say? I was living there, uh, just trying to live like a, a life like a nun, pretty much. Just praying all the time, <laughs> sleeping eight hours a day, no alcohol. Blue light blockers are probably in about an hour's time. As soon as that sun goes down, blue light blockers are on. Um, but doing that, obviously just normal PT and online, cli- online clients. And I've uh, got Hyrox. Me and Marcus are doing a Hyrox in February. So that bit, a lot of my focus at the minute is towards that because I actually want to do quite well with it. Yeah, yeah Something that's I want to do. Um, and then potentially another Hyrox in May, which might be a solar one. So I was saying to you before, I'm kind of very selfish with, I've got my own focus in terms of because I'm still young, I used to be an athlete, I really want to focus on that for a short period of time. Um, business will obviously come alongside that, it's still obviously my main passion is the business. Um, but yeah, everyone, I think it's good to have your own individual goals as an athlete, like you're going to obviously get shredded. Yeah, And yeah. you've got plans of bodybuilding show potentially. Yeah, yeah, that's something I've always wanted to do just to, to kind of prove to myself that regardless of what you've got going for you, you can pursue whatever you're passionate about more than anything. And while I'm going to be the leanest that I've ever been in my life, I might as well think, yeah, let's go for a bodybuilding competition. Yeah. Why not? So that's going to be a good experience. But just going back to what you were saying, I think obviously you talked a lot about business there. And obviously with this podcast, I think it'll be kind of good to set the tone for any new followers that will come on board. And I think it would be good for you to talk about how you ended up in the position where you are now, obviously as a PT and helping people and kind of yeah. going back to the start of your journey. For saying it's been a while. My first, on my, my own podcast process, that was the first episode I properly dialed in. So I don't think I've actually talked about it. Yeah. Since then, so it's been about so lockdown. That was when I started it. Uh, my old journey started as a young lad playing football. So I started playing football when I was what eight or nine years old, and just played for my local boys' club for a little bit. Haydenbridge United. Shout out to everybody from Haydenbridge. Great place. Um, <laughs> great place. <laughs> great place. Haydenbridge. Lovely, lovely countryside village. But um, played there for a little bit. Then I decided to be a goalkeeper because I got stuck in goal one time in training, and I enjoyed jumping around in the mud for some reason. Mm. Uh, and I was taller, obviously always been a tall lad. Then when I was 10 years old, got scouted by Newcastle United. Was in Newcastle United from the age of 10 all the way till 21. One of the main things that I suffered with was injuries during my time. Obviously, we've kind of got that in common in terms of injuries. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Mine was also obviously from, first of all, was grow- growing, had a lot of issues with growth. Um, spondylolithesis, like a slip vertebra on my back. Issues with my heels, with my knees, all that is, all that sort of stuff when you're growing. Um, so I was always in and out of training. Um, kind of ended up me diving, spending more time in the gym, wanting to dive and look into more injuries, like the reasons behind things, um, enjoying the strength sort of bodybuilding workouts. Um, had my first major injury when I was 16, tore my meniscus, and then that led me to spend, I think I was out for six months at that point. Then I started following a lot of people on YouTube and getting into the fitness scene, so it was Mike Rashid, 
oh, Jeff yeah. Side. Yeah. Steve uh, Cook. S- Steve Cook, that's not there. Uh, he's still going on. He's a proper OG. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think who else it was. Or C.T. Fletcher. I remember like, the first gym session I ever did on my own, like going to a gym that wasn't within Newcastle United, was I watched a C.T. Fletcher and Mike Rashid overtrain. It was like a back overtrain <laughs> video. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. like 50 sets or something. I can't remember what it was. But that was like my motivation to go to the gym, do my first workout. And then from there, obviously, got the got the bug. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, played Newcastle. Ended up signed, signed professional at 19. So I had a really good season. Um, was in and around the first team. But then at the end of that season, my injury started to... And so this time it was my knees again. It was patella tendonitis. Really started to creep in. I was struggling on and off of it for ages. Um, got to the point where like I remember warming up one day I literally couldn't like I don't even know why I tried to warm up I just couldn't mm. bend my knees at all yeah. so obviously being a goalkeeper who can't bend the knees isn't ideal um, yeah. ended up having numerous injections um, dextrose injections it was called like epi injections as well which is like an elect- electronic sort of acupuncture none of that works so I was out for six months with that then they decided to operate on me so I went to Sweden for some surgery on my left knee with one of the top tendon surgeons. Well, you went to Sweden? I didn't went to even Sweden, know Sweden, yeah, I know. It was Jeez. a nice little holiday. I went to, oh, what was it called? I can't remember what it was. Anyway, it was some like university, very like student-y sort of area, but Professor Alfredson. So if anybody's ever had tendonitis and you have to do the eccentric calf raise protocol, it's normally for like Achilles tendonitis. He invented that, so it's quite a, he's a well-known guy. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I had surgery in Sweden. It was meant to be a simple like three to six months, I think, rehab procedure i was ended up being out for 18 months and the problem still was never right um got back fit played two games then i tore my groin i had a bilateral groin tear Jesus. so that was my Jesus. that was Isn't my you know, uh, in the literal terms of do you know when you speak to someone at the pub like oh i could have been pro because i injured myself and then yeah i know that, that is have, literally you yeah yes i know i just i know it was just one thing after another. And the reason why i ended up finding out that i had a groin tear was i had a a tet not tear like i pulled my quad in a game I try to do it, if anybody follows football, uh, Edison used to do them goal kicks where, did you, you know who Edison is? Yeah, you follow yeah, a little course, bit. He used to ping them right in behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, we're playing Swansea away. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I'm feeling myself today. The win was behind where um, it was, I can't remember who was it up front. I was like, Carl Roberts or something. I think he's playing at Aberdeen now. I was like, right, we'll go and try and ping one in behind. Went to do it. My foot slightly hit the floor. My quad just went. Like, I could just feel it just go. Um, so I went for a scan with that and then, during my rehab process, I found I had a groin tear because it was just I was just getting loads of issues of it. Um, that was at the end of my contract, so literally that was kind of like all or nothing at that point. I got injured, so my contract was mm. up in Newcastle. Struggled with trying to find teams. I had trials at places. Got injured at a trial at Rangers. Um, I tweaked my LCL there. Was playing uh, non-league for South Shields. Had loads of issues, just not feeling one hundred percent mentally, and just just struggled with kind of the drop down in football. Um, then ended up played in Scotland for a little bit and then the start of the season after second week of pre-season the first week of pre-season was just running because the coach at the time just wanted to make me run and this is at the time where I was very anti-running quite different to what I'm like now still am still yeah I (laughs) still hate running um but yeah second week of pre-season probably one of the first times we actually like had a game on the Saturday um went over on my ankle felt it completely pop um, had like a shooting pain all the way up the side and I literally tore all my lateral ligaments in my right ankle. Um, I had a little crack in my, what, I had a little crack on the bone and also my cartilage was pretty much gone. So pretty much it was, it was completely done in. And the agreement with the club was that to terminate my contract, they would pay for my operation or I could pay for the operation myself and pretty much be like in the bomb squad sort of thing, like training with the reserves and not mm-hmm. be part of this. So pretty much I was just going to be seeing out my contract if I, if I stayed. So I decided to take, take the operation, contract terminated, um, my missus moved up to Glasgow with me and we were kind of stuck in a flat with no income from me and she was having to work like mad. So it wasn't, a, that was a, I've talked about it again and that was a kind of a bit of a dark time. Um, I did a little three day bender in Ibiza to kind of try and blow myself out the water with that one, but that didn't really go too well again. Yeah. Just in a dark place, but that was a turning point. So I remember writing in my diary, I think I've told this again, uh, writing in my diary um, that I started my journal at that point. Um, Brendan, you're better than this. There's a lot more like in life kind of more than just having football and just what you're doing at the minute. Um, kind of came back. I um, forgot to mention when I when I did have my knee injury at Newcastle, I did my personal training course course at that point. Okay. Um, so I did a three month course then just to kind of because I knew I'd use it eventually. I was that because that interest, you interest. were interested in pursuing that, or was that just because they kind of give it to you while you were there? Or it was how? not. So the only course we did at Newcastle was like the B Tech Level Three Sports Diploma. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. So like I kind of I was always interested in studies and stuff like that. So I did like an extended diploma in that anyway. 
um, just in case I wanted to go to university, which I obviously didn't end up doing. Yeah. But then when I got injured, um, we had a really good college tutor who was one of my dad's old friends, Darren Darwin. He probably pushed me to try and do something. I was like, you know what, I love fitness. I love training, might as well do my PT qualification. There was a company just setting up at the time, so I was kind of like the test dummy to kind of go through it. Mm -hmm. uh, it was Fit Education with Sean Jackson. So he came in, did all the exams, did the assessments, passed it. Um, so I had that kind of in my back pocket when I, for whenever I needed it. And obviously moving two years forward when injured myself in Glasgow, um, moved back home eventually after three months, um, was unemployed for, well, what would have been three or four months while I was rehabbing my ankle. Started training friends out in my garage for ten pound an hour. Yeah, that yeah. sort of thing. I think I shared it on Instagram a few months ago. Like my me when I set up my fitness account was advertising for like Christmas offer, <laughs> personal training, three <laughs> sessions a week, ten pound a session, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Which is mad. Um, started PT people out my garage. Then, um, then I got a job at Nuffield Health. Just again like a standard sort of gym. Good thing about that was they paid me for my sixteen hours. Um, like kind of just working, doing classes, cleaning, all the typical stuff. You got paid like a salary, so I mean it was like eight pound an hour on minimum wage. So at least I got some sort of income. Luckily, I was back living at home, so I had no real outgoings. Um, so started doing that, picking up a few clients. Uh, I was probably doing only 16 hours a week PT at the point. Then lockdown hit. Um, so that kind of not what luckily I was kind of furloughed from the field. Then obviously just ended up doing loads of stuff online, building things up. Uh, there started playing football again um, during the back end of lockdown. Um, again, struggled initially. I felt okay because it'd been that long since I played football. My initial plan was to retire from football and never play it again and try and really focus on my injuries. Got the opportunity to sign for Blythe Spartans. Really enjoyed the first bit at first, probably two or three months. Um, it was also nice to get out of the house because they were allowed to train during lockdown because mm -hmm. they were classed as like a pro club, the level they were at. Yeah. Uh, really enjoyed that. Then ended up starting to, injury started creeping back in, knees really started flaring up, like I used to play a train on like a Tuesday, Wednesday I would have my, one of my shifts at work, I just couldn't demonstrate like a bodyweight squat to someone, it was just, Jesus Christ. just that, like, the not old patella tendon injuries just were not worth it, and they just I hadn't recovered properly for whatever reason, I just couldn't, couldn't deal with it, so uh, ended up stopping football, when did I stop football, it would have been like the Christmas after that, um, when COVID was still kind of lingering about a little bit, um, but at that point, me and Bryony, my, my, my missus, we ended up moving into this house now. Um, so obviously, I had a lot of savings from football and, and obviously we just ended up saving, getting a mortgage, moving here. Then during lockdown, when things were slowly starting to open back up and I was still on furlough, um, I started training people outdoors uh, in my garage when you're allowed to do stuff like that. And then from there, I was finding that I was getting loads of, obviously, um, well, my clients were enjoying it because it was a one-to-one -one environment, a private environment. I was getting interest from people in because it's a new estate, interest from people in the local area because I was closer to Newcastle because um, I used to live in Hayden Bridge, which was miles away. I was getting a lot of interest with PT. Started picking up a few online clients, again, charging like, I think we talked about like £60 a month just for doing plans, check-ins, learning the whole process of things. Started my podcast, started YouTube, started posting on Instagram regularly and then you just kind of, it just kind of, built from there kind of thing. I, w I remember I was at a point when I was at Nuffield, I was like, how do people get to 30, 40 hours a week PT? How do people get 40? <laughs> like, how did it do that? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, if it, did, like, it just happened really, like, really quickly. And it's just like, by being consistent with things, it sounds so stupid because in the moment when you're at that sort of point where you're like, how do I get to the next step? Like, how do these people do it? And the same advice is like, what like, obviously we get taught off like coaches and mentors now is mm. do this, this and this, be consistent with it. Like post daily, show that you're kind of like, walk on the walk sort of thing and things will come and it did actually happen um so now same sort of thing what i'm doing now I am, i'm still training people out in the garage obviously it's a lot better than it was now um improved a, a lot in terms of online the quality of service I'm not charging 60 pound a month anymore it's obviously increased um and then yeah and, and training for myself at the minute my body's the best it's ever felt stopping football and having time to kind of so i did like a nine month period with james sutton doing a lot of bodybuilding stuff built a bit of muscle kind of fixed the old injuries now I've somehow got myself into high rocks, which is a lot of running. I don't know how the tables are turned massively. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, I think I've covered everything there. I've just blabbered for a little bit, but that's, that's kind of my story. So football, obviously it was tough going from like top level, Premier League level. I was third choice at Newcastle for about six months where I had a few injuries. So I was warming up in, with the first team, traveling away, all that sort of stuff. To then being rock bottom, unemployed, just kind of didn't know where I was going. To now, pursuing a career, doing what I love. I love training people. I love the one-on-one -on -one stuff. I'll always do that. I love doing group stuff. 
Um, and then obviously I've got my own athlete sort of career on alongside it, which I'm enjoying the high rock sort of training. And then, yeah, just, just living, living the best life pretty much. Yeah, you're well and truly living the best life at the minute as well, mate, because you're putting a massive emphasis on like the health side of things as well, aren't you? Yeah. Because obviously in our world, it's all like calorie deficit, calories in versus calories out, training, yeah. seeing her and me in the same. And while, yes, you might look good, a lot of people don't feel good. What I've noticed with a lot of your content and what you're doing is you're trying to feel good internally as well as externally as well. So Yeah, that's why I've kind of transitioned back into the functional. So I would probably say, obviously I was playing football at the time, but I was very more, much more into bodybuilding. I yeah. love that because so, I was doing a lot of like functional conditioning stuff when I was playing football, but I was very much interested in bodybuilding. And then when I started personal training and it was locked down, it was very much going back to the functional, fit, functional, functional fitness scene. Then I was back playing football at the same time. I was like, I'm picking up too many injuries here. Like, I'm, knees aren't recovering in my ankles so much. I'm getting mm -hmm. little bits of backache. Then I, when I packed in football, packed in functional fitness, I went more bodybuilding again. Learned a lot from that sort of side, side of things. But it was kind of hard for me because I didn't have a goal. Like I was kind of tampering the idea of competing. But I was like, I don't think I've got the genetics to kind of really do well and push it to like top top level oh yeah and i've never re even the natural like i was big on the natural like i still am interested in the natural bodybuilding scene i was looking at the like the like the people who were competing in that sort of caliber and like the physique and the genetics that they've got and i'm like i don't think i'm gonna be at that level i don't want to go into something with that mindset knowing that i'm never going to be at the top yeah which i know it's, it's great when people do have this sort of ambition to do it and they know they're not going to be at the top level but they love it so much and they still want to go out and give it the best the best that they can give i think that's great Mm -hmm. I just, it just kind of, I got myself in a rut and I was like, I, I wasn't really, not, I wasn't depressed, but I just wasn't in a good headspace for things. Um, and then I had the opportunity to do the National Fitness Games with Ross at the training club. He asked me to do that. And that kind of switched me when I had a performance goal. It was kind of, right, I'm an athlete again here. Yeah. That sort yeah, of yeah, switch. Yeah. I was like, uh, we cut and of the buzz of competing, I've, like, I've missed that. So the, the competition itself, National Fitness Games was amazing. Um, we ended up winning the, it was just the novice category, so it doesn't make it sound as good, but we ended up winning, winning it. Still a win, mate. And, that, and I still <laughs> win, I'll take it. It's a nice start, mate. Oh, First yeah. ever fitness competition, um, a cross, crossfit -y sort of competition. No. Um, I know, that, <laughs> that word, that, that word. Enjoy. I know. It's, uh, and I don't mind taking it for it, to be fair. It's, it's a funny crossover, isn't it? The bodybuilding world, the crossfit world. People are still like, oh, but I wouldn't say I'm crossfit. I'm saying I'm like a... Oh, the, the the hybrid term. That's the it. Hybrid, yeah, the hybrid term. Well, that's probably just as bad. Like yeah, fitness yeah. Thing, isn't nah, it? I mean, I mean I've, yeah, yeah. I've got nothing. I've got nothing against CrossFit or anything like that. It's, it's definitely not for me. Yeah. Um, but nothing against it. The one thing I do have something against is when people are like, bodybuilding isn't functional. I'm like, well, how is it not? What functional? is functional? It's though, just isn't it? the, then the, the people will use like an extreme topic, like, oh, if you look at someone like Ronnie Coleman, I'm like, well, obviously they're not functional. Yeah. Yeah. being very specific about a top end athlete who's not going to be functional but there's many of other bodybuilders that can do the splits and anything like that and I think it's just taking care of yourself you know using full range of motion you know what I mean not using heavy loads unnecessarily and obviously sticking to a good stretching routine and making sure that yeah. you are mobile there's nothing unfunctional about an incline dumbbell press because you go through a natural plane of motion anyways yeah so I think that's my only um thing that I've got to pick with the word yeah functional, it's functional it's like you see that what's that the and one see, exercise yeah, I hate seeing in the gym is that bird dog single arm row have you seen it yeah. on the bench yeah 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 I seen someone in the gym I was when I was at we, me and my missus stayed at Slady Hall the other day I seen someone in the gym doing it I'm like yeah <laughs> I, I understand it's probably quite hard to do but what is the what's the carryover for that yeah. sort of thing I'm like just do a plank mate <laughs> just, just do a plank and do a single arm dumbbell row I'll do Separately. some supermans just split them up and you'll probably get a better bang for your buck than that because they, yeah. you can't probably row more than like 20 kg doing that if you're lucky you're, yeah, just you're not going to get a hypertrophic benefit or, the, or you'll see people doing like a dumbbell chest press on like a ball suit ball oh, <laughs> and then you can do bridge for the I like it's, there's a guy on Instagram who does all that stuff for like he's got like half a million views he trains loads of NFL athletes and oh stuff. Boy, mate, I've seen it I've seen it it's he always preaches 90% yeah sorry 90 degrees is the optimal for everything and it's just like I mean you've got to take the functionality factor into it as well yeah. you know what I mean like going depth and squat is going to be more beneficial for the most part I just think you just be controversial for the sake of it more yeah I know it gets, it gets your views them sort of thing people love them them sort of uh, them workouts on TikTok and all that sort of thing don't they? anything mm. that's not like a back squat, a hip thrust, a deadlift. They're like picking some special sort of variation on it. All right, we'll do a, instead of doing a deadlift, we'll do it on one leg. We'll put a ball ball on there. We'll put a band on one side. Oh, we'll try putting half the weight on one side and most of the weight on the other side. Oh, well, then we'll go to functional. Yeah, it looks it's, good though. It, looks, it's, it is <laughs> impressive it to be fair. But yeah, yeah it, is, uh, it is interesting. But like, back to the point I was saying, I, was just, I just enjoyed having that kind of performance goal much more. Now I've got like high rocks to focus, focus on. I feel a bit more, 
It's a lot more, it's a lot more focused on things and mentally I look forward to training now. But again, it goes down to what you enjoy. Like I know you enjoy your bodybuilding sort of stuff. Oh, yeah. People do look, I think obviously I'll go back to some sort of bodybuilding at some point. Um, it's just nice to have that that goal to, to aim towards and beat myself up along the, along the way because the workouts are quite brutal. <laughs> I just enjoy it. Yeah, mate, they are, they are tough. Well, they look tough. I'll get out of breath just watching you yeah. put them on Instagram just, or anything else. It, it's, you know what it is? I've, I've realised, <laughs> I know, it is, it's, you look at something and I'm like, fucking, you write it down on paper and you're like, that's going to take a long time to do, hasn't it? But it's, I don't know, I was like sitting in the sauna before I've been doing all that sort of stuff. It's like putting yourself through a lot of pain to get a high at the end of it, which is like a weird way of thinking about things. Like you feel so good after doing the more pain you put yourself through, the better you feel after. Like for example, oh, you're doing a well, how long? How long's the project lean? 12, uh, sixteen weeks. 16, sixteen weeks. You're yeah. doing a sixteen weeks. It's sixteen weeks of pain, obviously tolerable pain, but it's pain yeah. at the end of the day. At the end of it, you're gonna be shredded. You're gonna look great. You're gonna look back on them photos and be like, "Fucking, I was in great shape there." But it's going through that process beforehand to get the end result. Everyone these days kind of thinks, right, I want to look this certain way, I want to do this, that, and the other, but they expect things to come straight away and they expect to feel great during the process pro, pro, uh, process of it. Um, it's like with any, any workout that's going to be hard, it's not going to be purely enjoyable during it. Like some people might get some sort of buzz off doing it, but it's the end result. It's, it's like I had this conversation with my bar the other day. He said there was, do you enjoy train as much as I enjoy chocolate? And I was like, you can't really compare the two because with the chocolate, you like enjoy eating it you look forward to it you enjoy eating it but you feel shit afterwards whereas with training with fitness with this sort of process of things you something obviously you might look forward to it a little bit but it's kind of it's hard to endure it but afterwards you feel mint and it's something that's going to benefit you whereas the chocolate bars obviously not going to benefit you a little bit of a treat every so often yeah. it's fine but yeah um yes yeah, so you just got to look at things in in that way and i think your ability to tolerate certain forms of Pain, again, I call it pain. It's not really, some, some sort of discomfort is probably the best word to use it. The way you can tolerate it, some sort of discomfort, I think there's a big transfer over into life as well. Like being able to tolerate a 60 minute workout like, I, like something that I did this morning and then doing a sauna afterwards, you, that, that'll transfer over into maybe being patient with something with your business or like a project. Say you're making a YouTube video, it might take you, I don't know, a few days to edit or like you're. You have that. I'm trying. I think you're trying to build a business. Yes, it's going to be time and um, take a long time. But the more more that you can tolerate doing the long hours, working 16 hour days, whatever it is, like the, the more it's going to become a norm sort of thing, rather than something that's like going to wipe you out. I'm, I'm kind of feeling like I've rambled a bit there, but you no, no. But I mean, it, I mean, it's so true though. It's like people these days they chase short term gratification instead of long term satisfaction. Mm -hmm. And the way I like to think of it is like everything you do today, whether it's a small task, like you can either steal happiness away from your future self or obviously give it back. Like if you look at how long we've trained, say I've been training the best part of 10 years. And I mean, I don't think my physique's anything but amazing, but I'm happy with where I'm at because of all of the groundwork that I've put in yeah. for the 10 years leading up to it today. Whereas you can do things like, you know what I mean? It destroys your mind. Like you can sit and go on porn, you can eat that chocolate bar, you can sit and stuff your face and it feels good for that moment in time, but you're literally stealing happiness away from your future self. It doesn't have to be 10 years down the line, but it can be at the back end of the week, you know if you started your week off incredibly bad, you're incredibly stressed, you have got no food prepared, you sack the gym off by Sunday, you just feel like a bag of dicks and then it just spirals out of control. Whereas if you track your food, it doesn't have to be incredibly meticulous, but you track at least the basics. You get out and spend 60 minutes outside, at least moving. You don't have to go to the gym and clang and bang the weights. You just go out for a walk. You try and get some good sleep. You manage your stress. By the Sunday, you're like, fucking hell, this is absolutely amazing. Yeah. And it'll carry over to the next week. Then two, three years later, You've got a body that you can't buy because it's one thing you cannot buy is a good physique. Yeah. You've got to put the work in. You've got to do the work. I mean, obviously, you can go and get plastic surgery and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But you can't just say, right, he's 500 quid. He's a grand. I'm going to get a good physique. You've got to put the work in. Yeah. Like your body, you've, you said you obviously, you, you've been trained for 10 years. That body that you've got now is the work, the byproduct of 10 years. 100%. Like, it's the same with anything, with business, with life, whatever it is. The, where you're at now is the byproduct of all the things you've been through. So if you've been through shit in the past, You've learned from them. You've built. You should be proud of where you're at today. If you are looking at yourself now and thinking, "I'm not happy with where I am now," you can. You're at kind of like a crossroads. Here. You can either go one way and kind of do nothing about it and feel even worse about it, or you can kind of take a step and start changing yourself. And then five years time, you look back on that five year old, five year younger version of you and think, "You know what? Thank fuck, I did that." And um, there's like a little. I, lo I love these little motivational quote things that you see on TikTok. And <laughs> oh, I'm them, making. Yeah. I put, I'm going to put one on today. Um, oh, it's the actor. I can't want the. It's not Morgan Freeman, but he, he was out of um, Deja Vu, the actor. I can't remember, that's the only film I can think of, but he's a very good actor anyway. Um, he was talking about, 
Imagine you're, like, you're, you're laying on your deathbed now and you've got um, the ghost of the people you could have been around you looking down at you. And yeah. like, stuff like that probably gets me. I'm like, fucking hell, like, if I'm, I don't know, 80, 90, 100 years old, however long, hopefully 120, I want to break the world record well, the, the way I'm going, the amount of I'm doing. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> I'm living in a sauna at the minute. Hope I live to 120. Um, but yeah, like imagine like, I'm there and then I've got like, that's the person I could have been if I put the extra hours in the gym. That's the person I could have been if I put the extra hours in business-wise and tried to grow my business rather than just settling or not doing anything. They're looking down at me, I'm thinking like, why didn't I just put that effort in? Because then at the end of the day, you've only, again, going a bit deep, you've only got like one opportunity, one life to make the right decisions and you've only got one body to kind of take care of. So you've got to think about decisions you're making today are going to impact what's going to happen in six months' time, a year's time, 10 years' time. Um, but yeah, I like, I like them deep sort of motivational Oh man, I, I love going deep. I'll sit and go deep all the time. Yeah. But I like what you're saying about you've only got one body. And so many people get scared to invest in themselves, but it's like your body, what you use every day from the minute you wake up to the minute you go to bed. But then you'll see someone will go and prance into flannels and spend two grand on a jacket and it makes them feel good. Yes, because oh, I have bought this expensive thing. I'm a little bit better than other people, but it lasts for what? Yeah. Best part of three months and then you need a new jacket because someone else has got something better than you. I know. Whereas if you invest time into, not necessarily needing a coach, but learning about nutrition, learning about training, getting yourself into good shape. I'm telling you now, like if you look at yourself in the mirror and you like what you see, that carries over to fucking every other yeah, aspect of your life. There, yeah. It's unbelievable, man. 100%. It's crazy, like you said, about people spending money on things. Like, what is it? Gym membership. Like, I've just signed up to that JD gym just for like, because I can do my high rocks workouts there yeah. and there's a sauna. 20, 21 pound a month, you can sign up to a gym. Obviously, even if you don't, I know people do struggle for money. If you don't have time to go for a day, money to go for a gym, you can train at home. Like, things you can do with your body weight. There's a million different workouts. Obviously, it's a lot harder to kind of motivate yourself to do it. Um, but there is ways about it. Like I said, you've only got you've got one body to take like, take care of, and the more that you take care of it now, the better you're gonna feel up there. The more that's gonna carry over into like your family life, into your business life. If it's like a knock on effect, I always talk about momentum. Like if you start taking care of your body, that's gonna you're gonna end up taking care of your your house. You're gonna take, end up taking care of your business, your career. Um, it's just a massive massive snowball effect in terms of things. Yeah, mate, you mentioned money there, right? And I've had clients in the past who, and I've still got one who, they don't go to the gym, they've literally got a step target, a nutritional target, a sleep target, water yeah, target, yeah. and that's it. And all of that shit's free. It's all free. All you've got to do is get out, go for it. And I don't care who you are, everyone's got 30 to 40 minutes to go out. And if it's raining, don't go, oh, well, it's raining outside. Put a fucking coat on and grow up and just go for a walk outside. Get yourself back in make some healthy food and if you don't know what's healthy and what's not youtube's free for everyone just go on youtube literally youtube healthy high protein meal and you'll come up with mountains and mountains of options and yeah. just take it from there or follow zach on tiktok because he loves a little high protein meal snack oh, i love, I love a high protein it. snack i'm basically great content <laughs> basically if, you sponsored more, by if you want motivation and watching me sweat on a treadmill follow me yeah if you want some healthy recipes uh follow zach i'm gonna pause that and reset it before there yeah so for people who are <sighs> stuck in a rut in the kind of you see people all the time they're like especially january we would be in january Jan, january gym goes they go for two or three weeks to lose that motivation what advice what things do you think well what do you advise your clients in terms of when they're in that situation really struggling for motivation really struggling to get themselves into a routine well the, what I, I literally see is to every single one of my clients who do get themselves in a little bit of a rut right and it's like if you sit around and wait for motivation to come sit and slap you in the face you're going to be waiting a long ass time. Motivation doesn't come out of thin air. Well, yes, if you start the new year, it's like, yes, it's a new year. I can start now. But motiv like motivation comes from results and results come from action. So as soon as you do that one first thing and you start to see the results, that's when the motivation comes in because you're like, shit, this is working. But see, for example, if you get up and first thing you go out for a nice walk, it's grand. You've started your day off well, so then you're going to want to continue on that momentum. You're not going to think, oh, I've had a healthy morning, now I'm going to end up being a pig. You're like, oh, well, I've done well this morning, so I might as well have a healthy breakfast. Then you have that healthy breakfast. Then you go out and you're like, oh, I might actually go to the gym and train today. And it's just, motivation doesn't come unless you start. And you'll hear it all the time. It's like, yeah. just start, just start. Like, without obviously making this about me, but when I obviously started my fitness business, I put it off for so long because... I didn't want to start because I was like, oh, I don't want to be, no one's going to listen to us because I'm that guy who's got a disability. They'd rather listen to like the Steve Cooks who were shredded and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then when I started, I sharp found out like, God, people actually want to listen to what I've got to see because yeah. I resonate. And it's, I would never be in the position where I'm at now or you wouldn't be in the position where you're at now unless you just started. Unless you said, oh, I'm going to do my PT. I'm going to start coaching people. 
out of my garage, I'm going to go and get that job at Nuffield Health. Yeah. I wouldn't be where I'm at now if I didn't make a post, you know, I'm going to help people online. Yeah. And it's the same with health and fitness. Like, if you don't start, you're never going to get to that end goal. The hardest part is starting. And once you do, you're like, fuck, now yeah. that was actually easier than I thought. I think the biggest thing is with that sort of sort of thing is worrying about what other people think of you as well, yeah. especially if you're someone who's overweight. Like, for me, again, try, just trying to relate to myself with... I had to almost start my career again in terms of obviously used to play football. I had to train people at my garage. Like two years ago, I was warming up to play against Man City. I had to kind of drop my ego sort of thing. If you are someone who has maybe been in shape in the past, that's a big thing that a lot of people struggle with. They always talk about, oh, back when I was 20, I used to be in shape sort of thing. Do you have to almost drop the ego and like forget about that and you start from, from fresh? And then if people maybe see you trying again, maybe say, oh, look at him, he's there. Uh, I remember back in the day he used to be in good shape but now he's put on weight and look at him trying to do stuff like the amount of times that people would actually say that first of all is very very slim like if we walk into a gym sort of somewhere and we see someone who's a little bit overweight or like is trying to do something maybe doing something wrong I don't really think anything unless they're doing something like really really horrendous which is a very rare occasion like mm -hmm. when you go if you're in the right environments you shouldn't get judged um, and if you have the right people around you you won't get judged for stuff like I haven't been judged like I've made really bad YouTube videos before. Like looking at back at my old videos, it was horrendous. I've made mistakes in the gym. I've made mistakes with certain things. I've maybe posted content wise that weren't the best advice. Yes, I've made mistakes in the past, but you learn from them. Same thing in the gym. If you go into the gym doing an exercise completely wrong, you'll learn from them in a year's time. You'll look back thinking, why did I do that? But I will learn from them. And confidence wise, your confidence will grow. So just by you taking that first step in the gym, if you're someone who isn't in shape, who's intimidated by that sort of environment, if you just force yourself to go one time, just like in your head, just get yourself in the mindset of saying, right, I'm going to go in, I'm going to do five minutes on a cross trainer and then I'm going to leave. Once you get there and you're on that cross trainer and you, you start start your five minutes, you might say to yourself, like you said before about your momentum in terms of like having a nice, like good breakfast and then mm -hmm. you'll, you'll end up turning and doing something else. You'll end up finding yourself doing more and more and wanting to do more and more and then you might start seeing results and then them results will end up turning into you maybe signing up to a PT or maybe invested on looking on YouTube for workouts and it'll just kind of slowly snowball. I think anything like you talked about motivation before, motivation is like a load of shit. It's all about momentum more than anything. Once you start something, the next thing will happen. Um, before you know it, you'll end up being kind of having something that you're kind of obsessed with and it's just it's just all a journey. So just um, if you are someone who struggles to kind of, you struggled with things, just force yourself to do one thing and you'll end up finding a routine, which I think is a big thing people struggle with mainly is routine and habits like we mentioned about sleep like getting enough sunlight and all the things I've been really trying to look into that and push it a bit more so making sure you're trying to get like 20 minutes of sunlight in the morning uh, not snoozing your alarm I'm big on the old cold showers which is I don't know do you do cold showers or not? I do a hot shower red hot shower and then I make it cold I'm not quite relentless yet to go yeah. into a freezing cold shower no, but just touching on because I know you were talking about a lot of healthy things there like if I was a complete beginner going into the gym just pick two things that you want to focus on like it's very easy for like someone like me or, or Brennan here to sit here and talk about all things health and fitness. And while yes, if you follow them all, you're probably just going to get to where you want to be in the quickest like period of time. But if you see it, right, I'm going to go out and hit 5,000 steps today. I'm going to drink three liters of water. That's fine. That's better than what you were yesterday. And if you can nail them for a week, introduce another habit in, right, I'm going to try and set an alarm so that I go to bed at the same time every night the next week. Then you've got three good habits. Then by the fourth week, right, I'm actually going to start let's say tracking my food intake and you don't have to hit perfect macros I'm just going to start tracking what I eat so you're more aware and all of a sudden after four five six months you're hitting your macros every day you're drinking your water you don't even have to think about it you just drink it you go to bed at the same time and it's just all about building that momentum and like I said you're never going to get to where you want to be unless you start you're just going to be sitting unhappy with the way that you look unhappy with the way that you feel and it's going to be even harder down the line to get out of the position where you're at now. Yeah, don't always try and be perfect as well, which I think one people, like a lot of people do, like yeah. per perfect training plan, the perfect diet, this, that, and the other. Just try and do, first of all, do what like fits your, you and your lifestyle. If you can't get to the gym six days a week and train or train all the time and get 20,000 steps in and whatever it is, just try and get hit the gym twice a week to start off with. Do like, simple exercises, do a bench press, do a lap pull down and do a squat. Start off with that, like at least you're ticking the boxes, you're a push, you're pulling in, in, in a leg movement. Then you can start getting complicated and looking at different movements. But it's just it's just look at like the areas of your body. Just make sure that you're ticking an exercise off for that one. Like they say that I think the recommended sort of um whatever the NHS recommend is literally just going in and doing two sets of twelve to fifteen on each body part twice per week. It, it just just start with that and then you can start building. If you have an interest in building muscle, 
then you can look at increasing your protein intake and then looking at maybe doing a few a little bit more volume maybe doing a more of an upper body dominant day not a lower body dominant day and maybe adding a little bit more frequency across the week um, but just don't overcomplicate things and even just if you're not if you're just interested in general health just like i said before just getting on a cross trainer and getting your heart rate or getting on a treadmill going for a walk getting on best thing you can do is get outside and go for a walk because you're getting sunlight in you're getting fresh air they're going to massively increase your mood you're moving around your heart rate's elevated all them things are going to make you feel good um, it's when people try and do everything at once and then they're not sleeping they start doing stupid things like hammering pre-workout that is going to like increase your stress stress levels people get too stressed and they end up burning themselves out which puts them off things if you just do a little bit of a time and focus on good lifestyle um, habits rather than focusing on what the top bodybuilders do, these st crazy stupid workouts, if you focus on your lifestyle, then you're going to feel better and that's going to encourage you to go and do more. Um, I feel like we're just like a, 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 a little bit in the same points over and over, but it's just yeah. trying to push the same message, isn't it? It's yeah. just I mean, habits, I mean, lifestyle. Going back to talking about copying bodybuilders, there's nothing more fun than copying a simian panda chest dude. Oh my <laughs> God. What, the Natty King? Yeah, yeah. the Natty King. The Natty yeah. King. He's yeah. not, I think, he's, is he confirmed he's not natural now? I don't By know. word of mouth. By, By word himself. of mouth. Yeah. <laughs> no, to be fair. Um, but yeah, I went off topic there. Like what, what Brennan was seeing there, it's just all about picking simple things, going in. And what I, when I get a beginner on board, I'll get them to do no more than four exercises and I'll try and get them to repeat that the second time when they're in the gym because the quicker you can get used to a movement, mm -hmm. the quicker you're going to start feeling the muscle, what should be working, working. And predominantly, it's going to be a machine. Um, I'll probably just go tip for tap with other people in the industry here but i'll always push people to choose a machine over most free weight movements especially when you're a beginner because if you try and get someone who's never touched a weight to pick up a pair of dumbbells and do a dumbbell incline bench press or a heel elevated goblet squat it's like you're going to be thinking about so many other things apart from the muscle what you should actually be working whereas if i say you go and sit on that plate loaded incline machine and get yourself set up so it's set up at the right height and you push nine times out of ten you're going to feel it straight in your chest Yes, you might feel a little bit shoulder, a little bit tricep, but it's nothing that you won't fix over a two, three week period. Whereas if you're doing something like a, an oh, incline dumbbell yeah, chest yeah. press, there's so many other things that you think about. You're like, right, is my yeah. back arched? I need to drive with my legs. I'm all unstable. I and see that a lot with my work. Because obviously I train one-to-one -one clients and I don't have like a chest press. I've got a, I can do a cable chest yeah, press, yeah. but like a dumbbell. Luckily, obviously I'm there to spot them. But if you ask someone, be perfect if you've got an online coach like Zach to set you like a machine exercise because you're literally putting the path of motion that you're meant to do. Like if you get someone, like when I get a brand new client come to do like an incline bench press, you'll find the arms want to go out, one wants to come in here, one wants to go out there, they're not in line, they're not asymmetrical. The machines almost teach you the right path of motion, the right range of motion, the right sort of technique. Um, you can even just work on your tempo and sort of thing. It puts you in the perfect position. So definitely start with that. If you're someone who isn't like necessarily bothered about, right, I want to hit, 100 kilogram bench press start with machines they're also a lot safer because if you're going to drop the yeah. weight you're just they're going to just it's just going to hit the pins and that's it's, it it's literally a foolproof way to get yourself into the gym because mm -hmm. there's no risk of i mean obviously you could in extreme cases injure yourself but we're talking if you're using the machine just completely incorrectly which most people won't yeah but like you're completely safe so you don't have the fear of dropping anything on you you're completely stable so you can focus on putting all the tension in the muscle you want to grow whether it's your legs your bum your chest or any other body part and it's very easy to progressively overload on it yeah, as well. You know, really if you go from 15 kilo dumbbells and that's what you're used to and you jump up to 20s, it's like, shit, that's heavy as tits. Yeah. Whereas if you just go one notch down on a stack machine, it's just yeah, it's so easy much enough. I know. The only thing I find when I program machine stuff for clients is especially if they go to like commercial gym at like yeah, peak times, it's horrendous. Like I've got clients who train at like JD gyms or like pure gyms, for example, and I'll set them like a, like a chest press because they haven't really done like a dumbbell bench press for me or something like that. Um, they're coming they're like oh I, I was waiting half an hour so I ended up doing this that night and instead that's the only frustrating thing so I understand people's struggles with that mm -hmm. um, so yeah. a lot of the time I do just say like program people stuff with dumbbells like say they've got an upper body workout I'll do right we'll do a flat chest press we'll do a single arm dumbbell row and then we'll do something that raises your shoulder they're all dumbbells you can just as long as you can shock at a bench that's fine um, so I understand in terms of that scenario that it is very difficult when public gyms are super super busy um, but if you do get the chance to use machines just to kind of keep your foot, especially if you're early days, um, or maybe just invest in a PT for six weeks just to learn technique on like dumbbell bench presses, your squat form, certain things like that, that are free weights. And then if you are in a busy gym, them six weeks are gonna be va really valuable because you can just take a few dumbbells to the side and get your workout cracked on while everyone's in one area. Um, or you can join the CrossFit scene and just have one dumbbell. You can torture yourself with it. But don't don't recommend you join the CrossFit scene. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm hybrid, man. I'm hybrid. Oh, yeah, hybrid. I'm hybrid. hybrid. You're functional. Uh, functional. Yeah.
But yeah, it's very. I, I followed one of the first people who I really followed when I started getting into. Um, well, it was I think it was just before I even did my PT course because uh, I had a PT myself for years, Graham Turner, who was great. Like, taught me, like one of the reasons that I'm really into fitness now. Um, he was big on Mike Boyle, of your American S and C coach. Very like sports specific. Mm-hmm. He does a lot with like so- like soccer players and American mm-hmm. football players. Um, but he was very big on for upper body to build upper body strength. You're gonna probably have to use weight like dumbbells, machines, and stuff. Because most people, when they start, they can't do a push up. They can't do a pull up. Yeah. They can maybe do in like an inverted row. But machines are a good way of kind of building that strength. With lower body, you can get away with it because most people can do a body weight squat. They can sit down, stand up on a bench. And they can probably do a split squat. So he was very big on, yes, especially with athletes who want to obviously, you're using your body weight. And more obviously, sport is a body weight sport because you have to move your body around. Very big on for lower body exercises, trying to push more body weight. And then for upper body, start with weights. And then obviously, if you can maybe bench press a 20 kilogram bar, you might be more likely to be able to do a push up than if you just try to start doing push ups on your knees and try and build that way. So there's a little bit of a, a thing that I, that I learned from him. Um, but everyone's got their own methods with things. Everyone's definitely got their own ways. But machines, are, don't hate on machines, especially the Smith machine. Everyone seems to hate Smith machines. Smith machine is an unbelievable. Anything where you can put yourself into a position where you're going to be incredibly stable so you can generate tension through a working muscle is fantastic. Yeah. Um, and that's some my real fun. If you can be stable and you can control it, then it's going to be pretty much the best bang for your buck unless it's completely, I mean, just set up like a big crazy apparatus. But other than that, yeah. you're going to be fine. Smith Machine's unbelievable. It gets so much heat. I don't know why. Yeah. Especially the ones that go sort of on a... A little bit of an like angle. An incline, yeah. Like, so like if you can position like an incline one way and push it sort of towards yeah. your head like that. Fantastic. Because that, that's natural. The way that you bench press, if you go look side on and like um, just anybody, anybody decent at bench pressing, they never... F- press straight up and down because otherwise the bar would kind of yeah. come forward a bit there's a little bit of an arc squats differently you kind of want a parallel bar path so if you were going to use a smith machine to do a lower body exercise like a squat or a split squat you kind of want a straight up and down smith machine if you were going to do some sort of press you want that kind of 10 to 15 degree little bit of a an, in, like a, an incline sort of thing so i know like a lot of life fitness ones are at an angle like this the cybex one at ultraflex i know that's straight Again, this is us new now. People probably don't care about brands and machines. Mm, so this is me. Tell you what, now. people do care about how much do you bench me? How much do I bench me? <laughs> I don't even know. To be fair, I'm doing runs in. So yesterday, I did a five by five bench with pull, well, again the, with pull ups in between, and then a run before and after. So I was only doing eighty five kilograms. The, I've done one fifteen. Hmm. Oh no, one twenty, one fifteen or one twenty. I can't remember one or two. What about yourself, sir? God, mate, I haven't benched properly in a plan in about a couple of years. But the most I ever did was one hundred and forty. That's and good. That's the best strong. part about it was my girlfriend was spotting us, so oh, she fine. witnessed the full thing. It's a known <laughs> fact: women increase your testosterone when yeah, you're yeah, training, yeah. isn't it? It's a yeah. known thing. Oh, it was. It was. I remember it like it was yesterday. Yeah. But I've never done anything like that since. I never really do one rep max. But anything to be fair, there's not no. worth it. We talked about when I came around yours that you don't really need. You don't need to do your one rep max unless obviously you want to compete in powerlifting or some sort of sport which requires you to do it. You don't actually need to do it. You're more beneficial sticking in like the six to twenty rep range if you do something like that. Mm. I mean, I can go up to six to thirty, but if you want yeah. to sit on a machine or dumbbells, and reps thirty long, reps. Unless you're a crossfitter, that is that's that is yeah, yeah. That borderline is crossfit. crossfit. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's like thirty reps on a on a deadlift going straight into what you call pull-ups I don't know what they are yeah well I know I, I, I can't do a kip and pull-up I've never actually tried doing it actually no I lie I tried doing it at sculpt once and I just couldn't get the hang of it I'm not quite there yet I'm still strict pull-ups I'm just doing just just running a lot in a minute that's all that's all it is um but like workout wise you don't have to go to like a, 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 a standard bodybuilding template as well if you are wanting to get into the gym like obviously it's it's good to have some sort of resistance training like to do a a couple sets of strict chest press or strict leg press or squatting or whatever it is. It's good to have that in your kind of back locker, but then you could maybe do that twice a week and then you could do it like a like a functional workout where you literally grab one dumbbell, like it might be a five kilogram dumbbell and you could do, I don't know, like an EMOM or something like that, something really simple. I love EMOMs because you can literally pick a set of exercise for a set amount of reps or a time. You could work for 40 seconds, rest for 20. Set amount of reps, set amount of time, and each minute you've just got to complete that exercise. So it could be a nine minute EMOM. You could do goblet squats, 10 to 15 goblet squats, depending on how many, maybe 15 goblet squats, if you can do that in about 40 seconds. Rest until the next minute starts, then you come to the second minute. If you can do push ups, do maybe 10 push ups. If you can't, maybe do like a single arm shoulder press if you've got the mobility and it works for you. Maybe try and do eight each side within that minute. Rest until the next minute. Uh, and then if you maybe want to do some corn, you could do like butterfly sit ups or a plank. You can like, work like work work your full body with like, a simple little format like an EMOM. 
Um, just pick a leg exercise, an upper body exercise, and a core exercise, or like a cardio exercise, like a ski or a bike. You won't know what one of them was. Is what's one of them? What's a, it's a, it's a ski? What is cardio? What's a rower? How, what's an assault what bike? What is cardio and how do I train it? Oh, <laughs> it's quite good though, having us do because you have I've, obviously I've done a bit of bodybuilding, but I'm more like functional cardio sort of stuff, and you're a lot more strict bodybuilding. So it's nice to yeah. kind of we'll probably have different. We'll have, obviously, we agree on a lot of things, but similar methodologies of how. So we had client A, you would probably go one way about it, whereas I would go another way about it. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, it totally depends on the goal, doesn't it? And if someone yeah. came to us with, see, like a functional or a fitness oriented goal, the first thing I would say is, look, I'm not the guy for you. Yeah, yeah. You know, one, it's not my passion. And two, uh, I'll stick to what I'm good at. You know what I mean? I'll probably refer them on to someone like yourself who could yeah. be better suited to them and get them to where they want. Not that I couldn't get them to the goal, but it's just. It wouldn't be me passion. I'd rather put them onto someone that would be more yeah, suited. If to I them, had right? a strict, if I had a bodybuilder, a client who wanted to like compete at a show, I would straight away transfer them over to someone else because I've I've never prepped. I've never I've done a I've dieted down for like a beef a but different just, gravy, isn't it? Different, I <laughs> uh, no, different levels. So I would just straight away probably. Well, to be fair, the way you're going with things with your clients, probably transfer over to you would in terms of the. Would you like to get into the competing scene or not? With um, your clients? Well. To be fair, it's one of them where I wouldn't want to take someone through a process that one I've never been through myself. Yeah. I get this. I put this hot topic on all the time on my story. Is like, if you hire a PT, should they have been in shape before? Yeah, I've seen a lot I, of people. That I talk personally about think yes. They don't have to be, you know, what I mean, like dick skin shredded, like in the shape of a life or anything like that. But they have to have been incredibly lean at one point if they see they're a fat loss coach. Yeah. Or at least have proof in the pudding that they've done it with countless other people before. Just because for me, see, for example. I'll use Lewis as an example who did Project Lean. I've got him down to that level of leanness. And while, yes, it's very easy to see and you've got to do this, you've got to do that. But you need to understand the emotions that he's going through. Yeah. You need to know how he's struggling. Because if he's absolutely blown out of his arse, dying, struggling to get a meal in, or he's run out of food at six and doesn't know what to do, panicking, and he's stressed, I need to have been in their shoes before to see, right, well, this is what I've done. This is what you should think about doing. Or this is what has worked for other people in the past. Yeah. Whereas if you've dropped like 10 pounds and you're trying to push someone to drop 50 pounds and get steered ready, mm -hmm. it's just, for me, it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, no, and I think getting that lean isn't actually going to be for everybody as well. Like, oh, no. it's no. not, every, some people might want to look like that, but mentally, and also may, maybe this phase of life, the stage of life that you're in, you probably not might not be ready for that. So especially if you want to compete, it's like, again, I've never done it before, but speaking to people who have competed and obviously following a lot of people, like influencers wise, um, who have competed professionally, like it's, they, they, you see them at the last few weeks before show and they're just like a zombie. They're just mm. non-existent. There's just nothing. In, it's not healthy for you to be that lean uh, all the time. Obviously dropping down for a short period of time is probably okay, but it's maintaining that level is just not good. Um, it's just a lot, of, a lot of willpower and some people like pick up eat disorders and go down that sort of get them sort of issues with it yeah. and become really obsessed with food and um, like a lot of bodybuilders have talked about like the last few weeks of, of prep they're literally like looking at Instagram and watching YouTube videos of, like food they're just like food like pe watching videos of w watching people e eat food it, it, yeah. gets, it, it's, it can get quite dark with stuff luckily I'm saying that I've had I had one phase when I was a little bit lean. I started spooning Nutella out of a jar, but that was I think I was just going through a lot of different things myself then. Yeah. Oh, mate. I've I've had a cut. To be fair, I wouldn't say recently, but I'd probably say the later part of last year. I was getting to a point where, see, if someone would ask us to go on a night out and I knew I couldn't track it, I would be like, oh, no, yeah, I don't really do it because I do it and I'd be so anxious that I'm putting in calories into my body that I can't track, I can't account for. So I mean, but that's only because I've been through the process where I've got incredibly lean before. And it does, it does mess with you. So like getting it to the level of being on a competition stage when you know you're going to be put on the podium in front of however many people's in front of you, competing against other people who are also trying to get incredibly lean. I don't know. I think it's just, um, it's one of them where it's good to see that you've kind of done it and put yourself in that position. But if you've got no, like you went to earlier on in the conversation, like if you've got no aspirations to be the best in the game, it's like what you've got to ask yourself, like what are you doing it for? Yeah. I know, and I, I say that for myself in terms of why am I doing it if I'm not going to be the best, but then it's also being the best version of yourself, that's a big thing for someone. If they're like, if like they're doing a competition, like people go and do one natural bodybuilding competition just to prove to themselves that they can do it, that's great. But it just depends on what personality you are. Like if I'm doing something, I'm going there to win. Like me and, I've been on Marx's case loads about this high rock making sure we're training because I want, I'm like, I want sub 60 minutes. I want to be at that level, which is going to be a task. But like, I just, it depends, like I said, depends on your mindset. If you um, want to go and do a CrossFit competition, which you probably wouldn't agree with, 
probably wouldn't do a CrossFit competition. I mean, you, you could do trained. one if you want to end up with copious amounts of injuries. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Probably. Depends. Depends what you want to do. So if you are like, you want to do a CrossFit competition, you want to do a marathon, you want to do this, that, and the other. If you just want to go and do it to tick it off, and that's like a big achievement for you, then 100% go and do it. It's great to have goals like that. Um, I think your focus is so much better when you have goals like that, and you, then you can obviously reward yourself afterwards. I've noticed my focus has been so much better. Um, when I've been doing, I've been doing my six months sober because I know I've got a high rocks at the end of it, and then afterwards I've got a few little social things planned. That's really helped me. Um, helped me in terms of I've kind of lost where I'm going here. But yeah, just uh, if you have a goal that you want to try and achieve, I reckon it's good to have some sort of thing at the end of it that kind of makes it more rewarding. If that makes sense. Yeah. Just, just, just relating it to how some people can take value from it is like you've got to have something to work towards. It's very easy to say, oh, I'm going to start the gym. That's mm -hmm. so fucking broad. Like, yeah. you're going to start the gym for what? You want to lose weight? You want to build muscle? How much weight do you want to lose? And you should never tie yourself to skills. But at least if you have somewhere where you want to be in mind, it's so, like you just said there, you've got that hydrox, you've got to beat this time, you've got to yeah. be number one by getting X amount of whatever it is that you've got to achieve in the competition. You've got something to work towards. Yeah. Every single one of my clients that I come on board with, or even anyone that I chat to, I'm like, well, where do you want to be in four months? Where do you want to be in five months? Yeah. And it's like, right, okay that's the goal we're going to reverse engineer how we're going to get there and if you do this today this today this today and then obviously repeat that it's just, it does make the process so easy and yeah. what i see to everyone is like if you've got a plan and follow it you're just going to get the way you want to be no yeah. matter how you get it in if you've had a shit day if you tick off what you need to do for the day you're going to get there i know and then just make sure that could make the good day good days come because there's going to be more bad days than good days Wait, no one's motivated probably. every day no one's it's yeah. just discipline isn't it it's just get up and get your shit done yeah, go up no. and stop being i said to my missus i'll wake up at five o'clock every day and i have like proper dark thoughts about it. it's quite normal <laughs> that's something pretty deep that doesn't it laugh. but i wake up and i'm like i just don't want i like i wake up sometimes and I know about a client in super early. I wake up at five o'clock and I'm like, I hope this client cancels. Obviously, I don't, but that's like the thought that comes to my head. But once I do my routine, once I get up, hydrate, cold shower, do my stretching after an hour or so, I'm fine. Like, I'm, it's like, not everybody wakes up. Like, in fact, there isn't a single day that you probably wake up feeling mint, especially if it's five o'clock in England and it's pitch black outside in the middle of winter. It's not really the most motivating time of year, is it? You just have to see it in England, mate. Yeah, I know. It doesn't group, matter what time of year. It's it probably be super motivated if it was 6 o'clock. Yeah, if I was in Australia, mate, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be too bad. But, it um, well. but yeah, yeah, go back like to purpose. That's when people struggle the most, when they don't have a purpose. Like I said, when I was kind of bodybuilding training, I had no purpose to it. Obviously, I was educating myself in terms of the biomechanics side of things. I was enjoying that sort of thing, but for myself, I needed a purpose um, and a, a reason behind things. That's when people start going down a little bit of like, darker paths and they're kind of a bit lost with themselves because they don't have a purpose in life not just obviously in fitness so i think having that fitness goal gives you that focus which might transfer again over into different parts of life like if you're in a job that you're not happy with and you're thinking right if i stay in this job in five years time i'm gonna be doing the exact same job for maybe two grand a year more why am i doing this that's when people start like thinking about like do i really want to be doing this sort of thing and start questioning life and lose track of things and then they maybe try and hide the fact that they're not sure where their life's going by going out on the weekend, starting giving themselves pleasure through drugs, alcohol, other means that isn't necessarily going to be long term like, beneficial for them. Um, so when you get a little bit lost of things, so you're having a purpose that's good, you know is going to be beneficial for you, and that's going to kind of carry over into the rest of your life, not just short term. Um, again, it can probably get quite dark and, and deep in that sort of conversation in terms of purpose because people do get really lost in it. Um, like I've done podcasts with people who obviously went through drugs and alcohol. That's all I've been doing a podcast next week with a guy who he, I think he struggled with alcohol for alcohol and drugs for seven years. He's a higher ox athlete now, and I'm following him on his story. And he's every day, he's up at 4 30, he's training this, that, and the other. That's his sort of method of keeping his mind focused and busy. Because not everybody, I think certain people, if you go through some sort of mental trauma, you kind of always have that trauma. It's, it's kind of obviously not as like kind of. Um, there all the time but it's always kind of there in the in kind of in the in the mist like in the back sort of thing so having some sort of routine and something to focus on some structure that's why i'm very regimented because i find that it helps me mentally really focus and forget about whatever was going on in my head it keeps me really regimented so i do my routine the workouts i'm doing at the minute are really tough but i feel great after them and if i keep on doing that I'm in such a better uh, mental health space which is one of the reasons why again why i stopped drinking because i was finding if i was drinking i was kind of the days following it, I just didn't feel too great. I started losing my routine. I just started feeling a bit crap. So, um, yeah, I'll probably just end up going. I keep on going deep into this sort of stuff. But yeah, I think just the routine, purpose, are very important. 
Yeah, really don't know how I'll follow on from that. Yeah, but, I, know. Um, I started going down a dark hole there. I was like, how deep do I want to go? I'll let you, let you have your moment. Yeah, I'll let you have your moment. No, yeah. I, um, I mean, in terms of routine, I'm probably the wrong guy to ask about that. Like, I literally write three... What's the day in the life of an online coach? Then? Day in the life of an online coach. Well, I get up at four o'clock and I make a post on Instagram <laughs> just to let everyone know that I am better than them because I'm up earlier than them. Yeah, obviously. Straight cold shower, straight away. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes... You're describing me here, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> No, um, I just I wake up. Um, obviously, I don't have a coffee immediately. Otherwise, Brendan will be on my case. I'll, I'll be messing with him. But, um, no, I just I keep track up. of your caffeine tolerance. To be fair, I need to keep track yeah, of yeah, it. yeah, cut it down, it. cut it down. But yeah, I, I just I live a, a pretty normal life. You know, I don't really go above and beyond and do all of the the health things. What you'll see people shout about. Not to say that I've got anything against them, but I just have a routine that works for me. I wake up go in the shower as I normally would and just crack straight on with work yeah. like pretty much the minute I wake up because I've got the benefit of that works fine for people like you don't have to do all the routines and stuff that I do that is fine mentally I feel great for them if you can get up and just crack on as long as you get your work done for the day yeah. then then it's all good I'm double checking that's not uh, I'm not restarted anyway Hi. hello you alright she's filthy get in right where's I'll get a towel <laughs> Jesus Christ I'm going to be filthy here I'm going to read ah, wait, oh my God, wait, wait 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 look at the state Look at no, 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 no. Lola's joined me and she's absolutely filthy, so we had a half an hour break to clean her. Yeah, she took some cleaning, like. She oh, took, oh, oh, you're. She wants you're, to see you our piece. You realise you're on camera now, aren't you? Yeah, she's seeing our piece. Sorry for the people who are um, listening on on audio, because I will upload this audio. But yeah, Lola's now now joined me, and I'm trying to keep her on this bloody blanket, which you're not sitting on. <laughs> um, but what we're talking on routine habits. That's what we were talking about last. Mm, you were talking about purpose and. Why you should have a purpose. I get quite, quite deep into things, wasn't I? Yeah. It is, uh, it is hard when you kind of have, you don't really have a reason to kind of go to the gym and stuff. Like I was speaking to my barber, like he's like, obviously really busy with work. His main focus is work. He's got two kids as well. And he's got no motivation or drive at all to go to the gym. Like he's got, he doesn't really care that much. It's really hard when you have people like that who, obviously now they're probably not going to have any issues, but who knows in, 20 years time if you don't exercise or do anything and you're working long hours and you're not getting enough sleep the kind of knock-on effect of that and um, so that they're the only people that I really like when I've had clients who have been kind of referred by the husbands or the wife sort of thing to come for PT because they're the really clients that are kind of difficult to do have you had any clients like that before that have kind of been referred or not necessarily referred but I've had one client um, who was he's actually a friend of mine from primary school so I knew him from primary school but then obviously Years down the line, reach out to us asking for help, and um, he was in a position where he was pretty much close to three hundred pounds, and um, obviously had a lot of health implications because of that, like breathing. Obviously, body confidence comes through things like that, but in terms of the health side, uh, breathing was a massive issue. He just felt physically incredibly unhealthy, and obviously with him, after the end of the program, like he was pretty much close to seventy five pounds down. But the main thing was. He never used his inhaler ever again. He could go out for walks. He went from doing 3,000 steps to 10,000 steps. Yeah. He was doing cardio sessions in the gym, which he would never have tried. And he was got an education around like protein and calories, and he always made sure he hit his protein. He felt healthier. His joints, although they were still causing him a few issues, they weren't hurting him anywhere near as much. And it's all just because we set a goal of, obviously, every month we're going to use X amount of weight, and this is where we wanted him to be. And he had a purpose in life and I was just there to kind of give him the direction and say, right, this is what we need to do this week. This is what we need to do that week. Mm-hmm. And I think it would be fair to say that the mental side of things improved drastically would be just a huge understatement because when you would see the first progress pictures, he looked miserable, he looked really unhappy. And I actually got a meet up with him after the program and he had nothing but love for us and he was so yeah. happy. And that's the best part of, I know I went off on a tangent here, but yeah. the best part about what I get to do is see people and have that sort of impact that, not just getting the physical transformation because it looks obviously amazing when you look on Instagram and you see a good before and after and that's what sells. But it's like knowing that you've generally helped someone and hearing what they have to see and in his case, added years onto his yeah, life. Yeah, it's impacting someone's life. That's what I love about the show. Like we'll probably touch on about like for new PTs and stuff because we'll mention we're going to talk about that uh, for a second. But it's that's the best thing about this job. You generally are like you're impacting someone's life. Obviously, that's what you got to keep in mind when you are doing telling clients to do certain things especially when it's like dieting and stuff you've got to be remembered this is someone's life that you're kind of dealing with but when you can positively change someone's lifestyle and make them they kind of more like they'll have more longevity in terms of being able to maybe play with their kids at a certain age group when maybe they might not be alive or maybe they might not be able to move at that that sort of age like some people if they never exercise and maybe get 78 they're going to get some serious kind of health issues some people might not even see 70 
So it's great when you do see that. Like I had my client, Colin, who's 72 now. He'd never exercised until he was 69. He started training with me. Um, he was massively overweight. He got referred from his, I think it was his son, who was a member of the gym at the time, referred him, forced him to sign up the PT. Um, and then from there, he's lost, I think, like 20 something kilograms. Yeah, I don't know, I've got kilograms instead of pounds, but I don't know what I converted. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's lost loads of weight. He's fit, he's, he can, he's more mobile now. We got him deadlifting. Like, I know it's not really, it's more of an ego thing for me, kind of thing, but 67 kilograms, I think, he got up to. Then we've kind of had to keep it at that. That's like one limit, and he started getting a bit stressed about going any heavier. But I'm like, there's no need for him to deadlift anymore. Like, if he can pick up 30 kilograms off the floor, that's pretty good going for a 70 odd year old. Like, he just needs to be able to move. Um, he's just recently had a grandchild, so he can now get down on one knee and play over because we've been doing things like split squats, box step ups, little things like that. Um, they're the most impactful ones and you can see like how excited like, he loves just that hour that you can have with someone that's why I love one to one PT you have that time with, with someone um, and that's like, any advice for, for any PTs who are starting you've got to be able to communicate and have relationships with people and rather than just being a, a coach and just telling people what to do um, you build relationships and obviously people kind of tell you not to mix your business with like pleasure sort of thing and kind of building friendships but you do generally if you're seeing someone twice maybe three times a week Seeing, like, seeing people on a weekly basis, you're gonna build up a relationship with them. Obviously, you've gotta have that kind of barrier, but you've gotta remember that you, you, you're dealing with people's lives and you can build really good friendships with things, with people. Um, yeah, 100%, just following on from that about, like you are, you've got an opportunity, if you can change one person's life, like it is obviously gonna be life changing, but initially when people reach out to PTs, it's from a position of vulnerability, like they're suffering with something, whether it's physical, or most of the time, mental or a combination of both. And you literally, you're everything in one, you know? Like, even though, yes, you're giving them a training plan, you're giving them a nutrition plan, you tell them what to do in the gym, you're essentially, you're a counselor, you're like a psychologist, you're a personal yeah. trainer, and in some cases, when they pick up injuries, like a physio or trying to be, and everything that you see to them can improve them in some way, shape, or form. So you need to treat them like that and not just a number. Like, it's, yeah. like, it's, you see sometimes, like, I, I see people and they've got like, 400 500 clients and i'm like you cannot possibly yeah, give them that much attention i've seen uh, i've seen a lot of things like that and i think my um my last brandy she showed me something on tiktok where it was like somebody was an online coach and they were kind of talking about like how they dealt with all these clients but the, they, the clients who fought the, some of them who thought they were originally working for a certain coach they had under, under coaches who were kind of doing a lot of the work so yeah. i think when people are on that many clients they're not actually getting the service off the coach who maybe they're actually think they're paying for that's yeah. one thing that's the one thing i don't really like about the online coaching industry obviously it can be very very good but when you're at the top top sort of when you have that many clients realistically how do you deal with that many people without kind of passing it over to other people obviously if you're honest about it and say look you're not gonna be working with me you're gonna be working with this coach yeah. instead that's absolutely fine yeah like, and i think you said you might be looking to hire another coach anyway which is great when people's businesses expand that much um, yeah it's just all about making sure you've got the right people like I would never I am in the position where I'm probably going to be looking to bring another coach on board but I want to make sure that their values align with my, with mine and yet again they treat the clients as yeah. like an actual person you know what I mean they care about them because anyone can come on and say oh will you sort my life out can I lose weight and I can say yeah 1500 calories cardio every day do this and you get a good before and after but you know what I mean the most part of my clients the busy professionals have got families that can only train three four days a week and you need to be able to understand that yes fitness is going to get them to where they want to be but it's a byproduct of the life like it's yeah. it's an accessory unlike me and you where pretty much it's fitness everything else around it yeah, yeah. And people don't realize that so I mean if I was to give a piece of advice for someone starting out there's always one you know what I mean be yourself like you've got to be yourself in a industry at the minute where it's very easy to look at like someone posting reels, especially when they've got millions and millions of followers and try and imitate them, get the camera quality of them and speak like them because you think it's going to be trending. It's very easy to get sucked into that. But like, there's no difference between you and the next guy apart from your personality and people buy into your personality, yeah. your experience. So just try and showcase that as much as you can. You know, everyone, pretty much everyone knows a calorie deficit these days. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows about like you've got to go out and move more, but it's just how you see it and like I said, your experience. So whenever I talk about something, it's me with my hip. Whenever you talk about something, it's you with your background with football and obviously your struggles. And people listen to that because it's relatable. So just be yourself, man. Yeah, I was going to say, people will relate with you. You don't feel like you need to be like, you need to be at like the same as like these influencers are like. Like we were talking before off camera, like we both are quite anxious people. Like I'm super yeah. anxious. Like sometimes, I'm, I don't know if I come across confident or anything, but I'm on, I'm on camera quite a bit. 
I'm super anxious. Like doing something on my own, like me sitting in front of a camera, isn't too bad. When I'm with people, that's why I butchered John in the first time we trained because I was a bit like, that's why I did it with Josh Bridgman. I said Josh Bridging them or something like that. Um, was it not just my big calves you were intimidated? It was. I was intimidated. Yeah, and your big biceps, me. Sorry, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, our biceps. Yeah, yeah I forgot yeah, about yeah, that. Of course, but yeah, <laughs> it's me skinny little CrossFit arms. Um, but yeah, like people don't obviously look at what you see on Instagram and think that's what I want to be. Sort of just be yourself, and obviously you will be anxious. Even like me doing my first class when I was at Nuffield Health, even it was like 14 people in the class who they kind of moderate level of exercise level. They weren't like CrossFit athletes or anything. I was still shit scared. But then a years later, that became my norm. Um, so it's just kind of building your confidence. It'll naturally come and just put yourself in a slightly uncomfortable situations. Don't push yourself too far out of your comfort zone because you'll end up scaring yourself. We're just little, creeping it uh, little by little and kind of just pushing them boundaries and then you'll, you'll, you'll naturally find what kind of path um, so it's nice for you. Good time, because I knew she was going to come in. Hello. Hello. Lost momentum now. I forgot where we're at. I know. Um, I forgot where we're at. Talking about... You literally just finished a good sentence. Man. I know I did, and then I because I was trying to rush while I was saying a little bit. <laughs> so I, I, see, I see you play. I was like, she's gonna be in in a second. I think you were talking about um, a little bit about being anxious when you're first starting. Yeah, I, I mean, think that's what you're talking about. I think it's any uh, being like as a PT, a one-to-one. Obviously, we're, we're both. Were you ever a one-to-one PT? Or did you do yeah, I, I did. Work, I did work in a gym for a period of time, um, but I wasn't. I didn't do it full. It was doing it while I was alongside uni and working another job at the same time. So yeah. I didn't really. I just did it because I always wanted to be in the PT industry, but I shot, found out that working 16 hours for free or paying 500 pound a month rent just wasn't for me. It's tough. See, that's why I have trade people out my garage. Mate. No, no, no. That's why I refuse to go to the gym. But yeah, like being in that one-to-one environment with someone, like if you are a, a slightly anxious person, being like one-to-one with someone and, and having 60 minutes with someone can be quite daunting. Like I'm always being okay with people one-to-one. In a group environment, that's when I started getting a bit anxious. So the first time I was doing classes and stuff, I was a bit like... Bit scared, and I remember the first class I did at Nuffield, the speaker wouldn't work, so no one told me that um, the thingy adapter thing was like the old fashioned iPhone adapter. Mm-hmm, so, and mm-hmm. I just turned up with me new before, and that didn't oh, have that, no and the way. Bluetooth wasn't no working. And I was like, oh, it's not working. Luckily, halfway through the class, the instructor, the manager, gym manager at the time, like saved me slightly. But that wasn't the best start, but if I started that way, at least it could only get better from there. So just accept that sometimes you're going to make a like, mess up, like I've tripped over something when I've demonstrated stuff in a group of 20 people before like little things like that you just kind of learn to laugh about it um but it's just like i said it's just building your confidence and the more that also if you work with someone one to one you'll get to know someone at the first time i had my client colin for like for an example like i didn't think we would like, i don't know how what i would speak to a 70 year old about for 60 minutes and how would we would get through the session because the first session he literally went on a treadmill for 10 minutes with his head down like panting like couldn't walk like we didn't even have it on the incline he was just mm-hmm. really struggling i was like how are we going to do this for like three sessions a week for however many months I'm going to have him? And now, obviously, he's built up his fitness and stuff, but now we've got that relationship where we can talk about, obviously, he gives me advice as an accountant, so he gives me advice on that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, just, obviously, just it's just a process. Just keep on chipping away at things and your confidence will build. Yeah, there's only, the thing is as well, there's only so much you can read about and try and get the knowledge before you have to eventually apply it. And you can only soak in so much and you can't know absolutely everything go into a session and know the full encyclopedia, that's a big word, encyclopedia of like anatomy and physiology and try and flex it because at the end of the day, they don't know anywhere near as much as you if like they're coming to you for help. If they knew everything, they wouldn't need you for help. So yet again, going back to what I said, they're coming to you in a position of vulnerability and you just need to be there for them and obviously get them moving and the more people you deal with of different backgrounds, like obviously you with, um, when you said you work with Colin and obviously he's a little bit older than you work with someone who's a bit younger, someone who's more experienced, you kind of learn what works for different people and you can sit and learn the theory and then try and blast off in a session you'll shot find out that yes it says that in the book but you've got to adapt it to that person and what yeah. they can do i know yeah. and like like joe blogs doesn't care about or colin probably doesn't care about if i can reverse band a hack squat at a certain angle and do this that and he'll make the exercise perfect he just wants to be able to like move he doesn't care like what the biomechanics and specifics of it you can just keep things simple. Like I think people yeah. go, I think if you train top, top level bodybuilder athletes, that's when all that sort of stuff, the finer details come into it. But if you're just starting out, learn your basics, learn learn kind of what movements they take. A lot, you get a lot of back pain, you get a lot of p- people with hip pain and, and them sort of things. So learn the basics that are going to help that, like looking at different mobility, looking at different ranges, uh, ranges of motion, looking at like what job people are doing and kind of seeing, right, if they're an office job, they're probably going to be more prone to tight hips, tight hamstrings, a lot of lower back pain. 
these are some exercises that are going to be safe for them to use and probably majority of the time aren't going to cause them issues and here's some other options. Then you might have someone who's um, plays football, even if it's not at a top level, just plays like five a side with a mate. They're probably going to be a lot more prone to having tight ankles, having tight hip flexors from a lot of running and they're going to be very one side dominant because they're going to be right foot or left foot. So just understanding, right, we might just have to do like unilateral single leg work rather than doing uh, like a bilateral squat, a normal squat, we might look at a split squat. So it's just understanding what, so you kind of, the more you do it, the more you understand each individual client's specifics and like, so you almost have like a stereotype client depending on their job and you know a stereotypical set of exercises. And then from there you can specify, but you don't have to go super, super crazy into detail of things, mm. especially if it's just a general client, just get speak into- Speak client, mate, just speak client. Just That's one thing that yeah. I was really bad at when I first started, I used to, so obviously with my university background, I used to think I need to know everything. I need to talk about the fact that I know everything. So mm -hmm. I would like talk about like ATP to clients and things like that. And they'd just be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, I, don't, yeah. I don't care about that. And it's just speak client. Like if they're not going to understand it, then seeing it's just going to be completely pointless. And just like you said there, think about the problems, what the client has mm -hmm. or the client that you want to work with. Like think about their issues. Like you said, nine to five, like what does a nine to five person struggle with? You know what I mean? Bad posture because they sit at the desk all the time. Mm -hmm. Snacking, they probably might snack because there's loads of stuff in and around the office. They might have a poor sleep schedule because they might work a big corporate job and they run them into the ground. It's like you need to address the problems that they face. There's no point in talking about a general problem for someone that works a specific job, but you're not going to know that until you start working with a variety of clients. So always yeah. generalise, then specialise, but never, never go off on a tangent and always think, speak client. Yeah, and what I'll say one last bit of advice for like but it's more again I'm very much it still applies to online coaches but we're very much the one-to-one -on -one, um, personal training because it's 60 minutes of someone's time in a day then they might have a lot of things going on outside of it make that 60 minutes about them ask them a lot of questions how's your day going how's life how's this that I make it very don't speak about what you've been doing at the weekend so I've always asked them what they've been doing because at the end of the day like I said they're coming to you for obviously fitness and, and exercise and stuff but they're coming they're coming to you specifically they've chose you as their person to come to two, three hours a week or whatever, however often they come to see you. So make that, make sure that hour, they leave that session feeling good. Obviously, there's certain exercises and techniques and stuff you can you can do to make someone feel good. You're not gonna hammer someone who's done, just finished the night shift. You're not gonna make them do a triple drop to hack squat to failure and absolutely blow them out of the water. Um, unless they enjoy that sort of thing, maybe some people do. But you've gotta just like, yeah, just make that hour about the person uh, and always try and make them feel good at the end of it. Um, so I was just trying, to, again, it's just people skills. There's a lot of good PTs out there with very successful businesses who necessarily aren't the most intelligent or they don't know everything about exercises. Like there's a lot of PTs who know a lot, but they don't know how to work with people. And then there's people who don't know a lot, but know how to work with people. And I would probably say in especially the one-to-one -one personal training world, I think maybe in the general fitness, if you're a good people person, you're probably more likelihood of being successful than if you're super smart. However, you can wait up. That's my personal opinion. I think if you're a good, if you've got a kind of a baseline, good standard level of, of knowledge, but you're very good with people, you're probably going to succeed more than if it was the other way around. It's just my personal opinion, I would say. No, I agree with that, mate. One thing I, I will touch on, and because we're talking about advice to PTs and not that I'm a successful person in any means to kind of talk about it, but when we went to the coaching convention and Callum yeah. Pro Coach, he said a good statement. He's like, be prepared to have no life at the start. And it's because a lot of people think, oh, I'm gonna go into this, like they might see people flexing, like working in Dubai, it's the big thing at the minute, and like online yeah. coaching or they're making mountains and mountains of money. And it's, yes, it's a lot easier when you've built up a client base and you can have more flexibility, but at the start, you need to be prepared to, like you said, the coming from a point of vulnerability, you need to put the clients first. And I mean, yes, you might sacrifice a few late nights, you might be up until 11 o'clock, but you've got to fit around. Like if you want to work with people who work nine to five, you can't expect to work nine to five as a PT. You're going to have to be there for them mm -hmm. outside of that because if they're stressed at seven o'clock, they finish the workout, they can't get on a machine, they message you and they're like, oh, what should I do? And they've got to wait until fucking nine o'clock the next day. You're not going to give them good service. They're not going to give you a good review and you're not going to come back. You've got to be prepared to put in the work. And if you're starting, which I know most people are from like working a nine to five themselves and they want to do it on top, like you're going to have days where you can't get your eight hours sleep, where you might not be able to train because you're going to have to put other people first. And if you can't put other people first, then in my opinion, you're in the wrong job. Yeah. So if I like most of the time I finish at like half seven, half eight, but if I finish at half eight at night, I'm normally on my phone for at least a minimum of a half an hour replying to clients who have like messaged me, like online clients who have a question about things 
obviously that's the only thing that I obviously find difficult. If a client, an online client messages me during a one-to-one -one session that I'm training someone else, I can't obviously reply. So I have to get through everything at night time. Um, so again, it's like an hour, an hour, well, a half an hour to an hour of just replying to messages, checking Instagram DMs. If anybody's like asked me a question from my story, that like you get people who's messaging you asking, oh, what, why do you do this, this, that, and the other. Um, so it's just, yeah, you have to spend that time. And sometimes you're, you're up on your phone until you literally need to go to bed. Obviously, I've got my blue light blockers on, so I'm cutting out blue lights. Don't worry about that. I'll get some of them soon, mate. Get to, <laughs> get some of them soon. <laughs> but you have to, that's the kind of life. And then you, you wake, like, a lot of the time for me, it's waking up early because I'll have clients before work. Uh, before that, we work for them. So obviously it's between the hours of like six and nine. The clients go to work, I'll have a few during the day and then I'll catch up on, I'll do content or whatever I need to do. I'll train during the day sometimes as clients and then it's in the evening. I'm, I'm working from half three till sometimes half eight in nighttime and then reply to the message. So that's the kind of life of a PT. And then I'm obviously doing a little bit of online coaching. You've got to think about the hours that you're doing. It's not just a nine to five and then you're off at the weekend. It's obviously weekends. You'll be doing the same check-ins, catching up with yeah. clients. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, like obviously, without talking about hustle culture, I can't remember like the last day I actually had off. Obviously, I'm not saying that I work nine to five every bloody day, but like at least every single day, I'm talking something. to someone. I do at least a couple of hours of something, whether it's designing a post, whether it's sending a message, and it's just something that'll come through time. You need to get more confident talking to the camera because I'm telling you now, when I first put the camera up and spoke, I was absolutely dreadful, but. No one has to see it. You can take there's hundred takes, and the one that you think's good, that's the only one that goes on Instagram, TikTok, yeah. Facebook, YouTube, whatever it is. But like, just going back to my point and what Brennan was talking about is, you need to be prepared at first to to not have much of a life because you need to put the clients first. And if you can't put the clients first and you're putting yourself first, then you're probably in the wrong job working with people. You need to work where in a job where you're not having to help someone. You know? Yeah, I know. It's like I said, but we said before, it's people's lives that you're working with as well. Um, but I think that's a nice little way to wrap up because we, we've waffled quite a bit and Zach's on his uh, second dose of caffeine. Sponsored by um, Optimum Nutrition BP20 for 20% off. Link in the description. Yeah. I mean, if you want a monster, you can use Zach20 because I'm a sponsored monster athlete as well. Yeah, we go. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. that's actual bullshit, unfortunately. Yeah, right. um, <laughs> but yeah Lola's, Lola's sick of us waffling, aren't you? But yeah, I think it's been a good uh, first episode of the of the podcast that I haven't named yet. Yeah, well, we'll come by the next podcast. We'll, we'll have try and be a bit more professional. And I think what will be good for the next podcast is both of us on our stories will put a QA and a on um, and we'll ask questions, which I know on the last part of the podcast, which is something I'm quite interested in, is helping PTs in the industry. And then obviously we'll also talk about other problems that people might have mm -hmm. with health and fitness. And I'm pretty sure... We'll be able to talk about ourselves at some point as well. Yeah, we'll always find a little bit for that one. Stroke with egos just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. We'll see you next time. All right, see you next time, guys.